Okay guys, welcome back to another Assetto Corsa setup video. Again, we're going to be looking at another 650S GT3 setup and it's round veil longer as you can see there from the clip now. So we're going to start this setup again uh, with doing it on an online race. So we're going to go through our qualifying session. This was the first lap that we did with this setup in an actual online session. We've done a couple of laps in a practice mode just to get the setup right and then we went straight online without any practice and seeing what it can do it wasn't a perfect lap but as you can see there's a lot of potential within this lap as we come into the first braking zone looking out again for that white marker on the left there going down into third gear and then again on the power as early as you can again we're running that traction control on the weakest setting and again it's not kicking in on any corners so we've got it pretty much perfect to set up to run it on that setting that's what you want it not to kick in but if you overstep the mark just to help you out a bit so we're going to look again for the braking zone breaking in between the white marker and the curb again on the left Staying in third, getting again on the power as early as we physically can. No traction control kicking in again, as you can see there. Then going into fifth gear and braking just past that bit of um, tarmac on the right there and the curb on the right. Going down in second gear, tight line as possible. On the power, nice and early, accelerating through the gears. And then into the tricky braking zone for this corner where we're going to go into fifth gear and then down gear it. Try and keep it as tight as you can going in second gear and trying to hold a tight line through this corner. Into third gear, then into fourth gear and then back down to second gear we want to try and hit that apex a bit better see we missed the apex a bit this was our first lap running this setup so we're going into the next corner going down into third gear trying to clip the curb and then chucking it back in for the right hander now then into fourth gear oh, as we go through the apex to get a better exit speed so we're going to be coming into the final corner going down into third gear and taking a nice tight line again and then on the power as early as we physically can so then going into fourth gear and then going over the line for a 1 minute 32.0 so there was a lot of potential for that lap to be probably a 31-0, maybe faster, considering that was our first lap running that setup. So we're going to just go into the pits now. And as you can see, I don't know if some, if you hear some of you people play online a bit, you'll see it. This lobby had a, fa a fairly competitive lobby. Um, person in second there, Surge77830, I think it is there. And the person below my fast racers, see they're 134.1 on, on both of them. They're, they're, they're fast racers normally they're going to be winning um, races in lobbies they're good racers fast racers this is a good lobby to test this setup out so you can see there we're over two seconds ahead on our qualifying lap within just our first attempt at a, um, a hot lap so i was really impressed with that it's definitely more potential should have been, there's definitely a one uh, one minute 31 or at least a one uh, as i say at least a one minute 31.5 maybe a one minute 30 in the setup so we're going to start the race so lights are green and We've got the guy in second surge is in the Lamborghini. The one thing about the Lamborghini is it's got a very fast accelerate, um, acceleration on the car. So with the 650S, you're at risk at the start. See, straight away there, we're down to second place. But we know we should be okay in terms of our, our car's ability. So we're going to go into the first corner. We're going to go to the right there because I have a feeling that he's going to outbreak himself because I kind of know most people do. So we managed to break a little bit early. We've got more grip on our setup car's better setup as you can see there he runs a little bit wide there we're back into first place but instantly i know that that car is going to come straight back at me so i'm going to go to the right hand side stay on that right hand side but keep the left tire on the bit of black tarmac so we've got grip on that left hand tire that's the tire that's going to take a lot of force through this right hand to see there so we've got the grip still but we've held the position perfectly we can get on the power really early so now we're on the power a bit early in the um lamborghini behind us and we've managed to give ourselves a little gap now as we're going to go through this corner taking it easy still remember the tyres are not up to temperature still, so we're into going through the gears. Still running the traction control on the weakest set, and you don't need to um, go any lower than that, really, with this setup. It, it drives perfectly fine. I remember, guys, in real life, these guys in GT3 cars use traction control, and they would never run it off because it's better for the tyres and it's faster, to be honest. So we're running it on the weakest setting. I did try a few laps with it off. And strangely, on this track, I don't know whether there's a glitch, because I'll show you what I mean when it comes to it. Um, the traction control numbers don't match correspond to what they show you on the screen i turned it off for a few laps and it felt like traction control was on more than when it was on its weakest setting on this track i don't know what was going on but when i turned it off it was holding me back on corners i couldn't get the power down it i felt like it was bogging down a bit and then um, the lap times went down by about three four times it was really annoying it's frustrating so i just put it back to its weakest setting and that's why i've been doing spa and other tracks on its weakest setting because it feels like it's got less traction control on them when it's off it's really strange and i don't, I don't know if it's another bug that i've noticed because you'll see what i mean when um, the numbers don't match up when it says it's on 12 or, 
or etc. Um, 12 on this thing on the um, screen. It's actually on setting 13, which isn't a setting that shows you on your screen. So I don't know what's going on there, whether it's just a, a mixed number. And when you go through to traction control setting 1, it says 2 on it. So there's definitely some issue there within the game, a little bug maybe. But so far in the race, you can see there, we're building up a very little gap now. Um, we've got maybe two seconds there, which is quite good considering we're only a little bit way through lap two. And you can see there, they're not bad racers. They're not making mistakes. They've got decent speed. And if you look behind them two racers there, there's a fair gap between them. And then look at the, the, the gaps are quite big behind them. So these guys that I'm racing are good, a good test for this setup to see how it works. And so far it's working really well. We're going to go through this whole race. We're going to leave the whole race on this video for you guys to watch. And there's, there's actually a very rare moment where you see some um, drivers that are actually getting lapped that show um, like really um, really good sportsmanship in what they do. It's, I was really I was amazed when it happened. It's probably the first time I've, on, a, on any simulation game that I've seen this happen. I mean, I've had it on project cars on the odd time where someone will pull over, but this was two guys running the same time. Uh, actually, re really good what they did, and I'll, I'll wait for it to happen for you guys to actually watch it. So we're running our lap times in 1 minute 32 so far. Um, harder track with the fuel to pull the um, lap times off because it's a lot of tight corners with acceleration zones. So you're going to lose more to your tracks at are fast corners because the car needs to build that speed back up. Expect, especially 650S which hasn't got the best acceleration. <clears throat> That's why I'm really impressed with this car being able to dominate the um, Lamborghini around here because I know for a fact the Lamborghini is quite um, competitive around this track. I'll have to try and get um, a few setups for that Lamborghini out soon because so far I found it very similar in terms of speed to the 650S, maybe a few times slower on certain tracks, but on certain tracks like Monza etc it's clearly ahead. So you see there we're building up a little lap, we actually made a little tiny mistake if you notice on that um, tight hairpin where we hit the kerb but we didn't lose much, we lost maybe half a second but we're still running okay lap there as you can see there, it's probably going to be a <coughs> 1 minute 33 still. <clears throat> as long as we keep our laps in the late 32s, um, early 33s, I'm happy really, or mid 33s. As you can see there, we managed to gain a bit on that corner anyway. We brought the time back down, so it's going to probably be a, a lowish 33 on this lap after we gained a little bit on that corner. So you see there, we're changing the traction control again to its weakest end because I wasn't sure what was going on with the traction control because I've only recently noticed this with the um, game. It doesn't with the numbers not corresponding that's when I've noticed it really I've started to pick up on it and I'm, I was just trying to experiment with in this race to see what was what was going on with it because with it on its weakest setting it felt like I had less traction control so if you see the numbers coming up on the screen it's because I'm messing with it off and on to see what feels better and I found that with it on its weakest it felt like I had less traction control than with it off which is really baffling but maybe um, maybe I'll go on the forums and message set of course or message them on twitter although very rarely do they ever reply or do anything on twitter to do with um, my videos but you never know they might one day pick up on one of the setup videos hopefully and um, to share some of these <coughs> setups with the community because i think it'd be a big help i know project cars did a lot of sharing of, our, of mine and zachary's tv's setups get on project cars and um, which helped us out a lot getting a lot of them um, subscribers hopefully set of course can do the same to help you guys out but you can see there in the race situation now we've we've pulled up a reasonably nice lead so far um we'll have a little look at the um the delta gap between ourselves and second place and third place when we go over the line in a minute when we when we see the difference you see we're on a, a pretty nice lap here so far we're gonna probably go over the line on a 32.6 i think it is looking at the delta there so let's just see what it is it's a 32 point six yeah 32.6 which i think ends up being the fastest lap that we do in this race but like i say this track i may have to experiment running the medium tires on this track because with it being 10 laps and a lot of tight corners and um acceleration zones where the rear tires out a bit and some like quite fast corner, like not particularly really fast corners but it's kind of a track that will wear the tires out there's a lot of change of direction so it may be a um worth experimenting with this track running the medium tires the soft tires ran fine right to the end and they'll do you fine and especially at the start of the race they're going to give you that little bit of advantage on the gt3 cars but it'll be worth me exper experimenting within these cars to see if the medium tires work better for this car anyway 
I know that obviously the GT2 cars, I do find running the mediums a lot better on the GT GT2 cars, but so far on the GT3, the soft tyres seem to last. Obviously, with GT3, the soft tyres are used in real life for a lot longer than 10 laps. That's probably why they do last. So we're coming up to our first set of back markers now. It's going to be you're going to see something very rare in a online race in a bit. It, I think it's on this next lap that we're coming up. Um, about just on just after the first sector, I think it is, or before or or before the first sector, first sector split. So <clears throat> we we're coming up to lap our first few um, drivers there now, and it's, it's it's really nice to see what happens here. It doesn't happen very often within an online race, not a public race anyway. If you're doing league racing, yeah, it's it, it's because they have to do it and they will get out of your way. But it was really good to see because they're not actually bad drivers if you look at them. They're not they're not making mistakes, but they're racing they're racing clean having a little battle by the looks of it between themselves and I don't know whether they're in a party or something but it was really good to see them both do the exact same thing now as you can see there we're coming up into the range where we're going to see and I start seeing the, rear, the, the red lights flashing on the back see them there flashing away both pulled over got out my way got out of the way of the battle I think they probably know I'm in a bit of a race even though we've got a fair fairly big lead it's such a good thing to see that in, a, in an online public lobby because it doesn't happen very often and it's it is really good compared to some of the other people that I've come across so far in this game. It was I was pleasantly surprised by that. So we're running into lap we're running on lap six now, you can see because they got out of the way, we're we're pretty much matching our um at this point on the delta we're matching our best lap. I think we actually make a little mistake. Not a mistake, but we don't get this bend perfect coming up in a minute, I think. If we have a little look on the delta, let's just see how we run it. Even though we've actually done that reasonably okay, so we're still we're still about level with our delta for our best lap. Um, we do that bend reason well. Don't seem to get we didn't get in fourth gear early enough there. If I, I've just noticed that then straight away, and that's where we've lost a few tenths. So that's one key area for that corner is getting in fourth gear before you come out the exit gives you better drive coming out that corner. So we're going over like looks like another one minute thirty two lap anyway. Yeah, one minute thirty two point nine. So it's another consistent lap. Um, I think with more practice with this setup, considering this was our first online race with this using this setup, we could probably get this setup to use maybe very low to mid 32s consistently. Um maybe have a few little tweaks, but this setup as a base is doing really well. This silver so if don't forget guys, check out that silver so setup because that's the setup where I, I I basically used to um get the setup base setup for this McLaren because it's a good track. I find it's a good track to get your setup because it's got fast smooth bends slow bumpy bends fast bumpy bends it's got every kind of bend you can think of within silverstone so it's a nice track to do your setups on nice track i like to basically go on there and get a few base setups done it's worked well with the 12 c gt3 and this car so far mainly because of the special events that i had to do using them cars but i've then just adjusted um like gear and etc for uh, different tracks and um your downforce levels and sometimes a couple of suspension settings if maybe running the car a little bit higher or lower is possible because obviously if it's a really bumpy track you're going to find you want to raise that suspension up a bit and if it's a very very smooth track with little bumps at all you can find you can lower that car down and give yourselves more downforce in the car so we're going to go over the line again running the lap a little bit slow this time we're going to probably hit a, 30, a low 33 there so it's a low 33 but again it's not a bad lap it's still only four times five sorry five times off our best lap and you can see the setup's working really well we, we're in a nice little rhythm so far not made any real major mistakes going through this now and as you can see there we're, we're keeping the delta constantly within half a second of the um our best lap which is what you really want to do anything between like i say i like to set a, a benchmark which would be say a 33 zero and then you've got your four or five tenths ahead of it you can go and then four or five tenths behind it so you're giving yourself a little second leeway i've gone through this in a previous video about keeping it consistent and um just making sure your laps are smooth yet fast especially on this track i found that when i tried to this is one track that i found the more aggressively i drove it and the harder i pushed the slower i went you really do need to get into the rhythm of the track and just take it smooth and just getting on that power nice and smoothly as little mistakes will cost you on this track so bear that in mind when you're maybe hot lapping this setup and there 
trying to test it out is smoother is better especially for something like the slower corner there um, I was trying to go into first gear sometimes getting on the power it was just losing my time it's best just to stay in second gear take a tight line and just gradually build that power through and get a nice clean exit and you're gonna you're gonna see the lap times come down quite a bit so we're going over the line again and it looks like it's going to be another 30, is it 33 point something? Yeah, 33.0. As you can see there, it looks like we've just gone past another back marker as they were coming out of the pits. I um, don't know if they were leaving the lobby or went out, but it looks like they were in the pits or something. So that's another guy we've actually lapped within this race. So now, like I say, on lap 9, second to last, like obviously, our penultimate lap. And um, so far, the setup, I think, I think you'll have to agree, it, it, it seems to be doing us really well. Um, few setup. We'll go through the setup changes that we made for this setup um, after the video, the race is finished. Um, pretty much using that silver summer setup as a base again, and just adjusting the downforce architecture and the. Um, I think I may have actually adjusted the ride height very slightly, but like I say, just make sure you take note of this the, the setup when we get to it. So this lap looks like we made a little mistake on it somewhere because right, I wasn't actually watching the footage then, but we've actually lost. A fair, fair chunk of time we're actually seven hundredths down on our best lap but again as long as we keep it under a 33 5 or or so it's not too bad i actually think the tires may have started to be wearing a little bit um out at this point they're not obviously wearing out at all where you'd have to hit but i think they're losing a little bit performance but we, we, it looks like we're going to go over the line within our set and um, boundary which we like to set ourselves as long as it's around the 33.5, I'm reasonably happy with um, that. As long as we don't start dipping slow on that, I think the fastest, yeah, 33.4. I think the fastest lap that the second place did in the race anyway was a 33.7. So that just shows you where, as long as we, our, our consistency is there, we're still going to win by a fairly big margin. As you can see, we've got, I think we've got a, quite a big gap now. Anyway, it must be over 10 second gap to second place, or, or around 10 seconds anyway which is a, a good gap to build up against drivers that are as fast as Serge um, and is it roll off on there? I can't, I can't fully see but I know I've raced them a couple of times and they're reasonably good drivers um, I've raced both of them in um, the GT2 category again and they, they reason, they're reasonably fast they're not the fastest drivers you're going to come across but they are fast drivers that know how to drive so it's a good test for this setup and um, Hopefully I'll come across some really fast drivers. I know we're quite a few, but um, they tend to race in um, a league race situation. And at the moment, while I'm trying to get all the setups sorted, I just want to go into public lobbies to show you guys how they perform these setups. And um, I may consider going back into league racing at some point um, in the future. So they do do it on this game. They actually um, get two people in a lobby and then invite each invite seven players in so it basically creates a, a, a private lobby i may consider doing it in the future but at the moment i'm sticking to doing the special events and setup for you guys within this as when i do league racing i tend to spend a week just doing a setup and i get a little bit too too into that one tracking car and i end up neglecting a lot of other cars and tracks so at the moment i want to give you guys a lot of base setups and that's what i'm going to keep doing so you can see there we won won the race quite clearly and um, we had the fastest lap in the race by nearly a full i think it was actually over a full second which is pretty good so we go through it now as you can see <clears throat> we're going to go through the end results for the race we're just waiting for the other guys to finish um let's see i think he's just gone over the line there so yeah looking at lap times we were over a second faster so we'll go through the setup that we use now very quickly just to go through the a few changes that we might have made in um the basic setup again so remember guys it's a Silverstone default setup, the um, base setup that we use. And um, okay, guys. So at this point in the setup, we had to edit it out and change it because of the changes within patch 1.03. I've edited in the updated setup, which I've tested, and it runs exactly the same. No difference. Should be possible to hit the exact same lap times. I just didn't want to give you a false setup. So this is this is the updated setup now with the error on 06 drivetrain same as what it was before is 10 55 um gives them a nice balance through the corners now suspension it's all pretty similar until you get to the toes but obviously the toe angles have been adjusted with the patch but make sure you take them um numbers down and with the anti-roll bars 8.2 still feels fine 
Um, it may be worth trying to up the rear by maybe to three or four just to see how it handles, but it felt fine when I tested it. Also, within the damper settings, um, it all felt reasonably nice to drive. Maybe add one onto the bumps up on the front just to see how it feels. But overall, that, that all felt okay. Anyway, guys, I'll be back with more videos soon, so make sure you check them out. Thanks again for watching.